In the unresolved problem segment tonight, the Iran nuclear negotiations. Secretary of State John Kerry is back in Switzerland for talks with his Iranian counterpart, scrambling to hammer out the framework of a deal before the March 31st deadline. This is not a choice, as some think it is, between the Iran of long ago and the Iran of today. It's not a choice between uh, this moment and getting them to give up their entire nuclear program, as some think. It's not going to happen. Anybody standing up in opposition to this has an obligation to stand up and put a viable, realistic alternative on the table. And I have yet to see anybody do that. But can we trust Kerry and the Obama administration to seal a deal that will actually make the world a safer place? Joining us now from Washington, Cliff May, president of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, and David Tafuri, who was a foreign policy advisor to the Obama administration. Uh, Cliff, let me start with you. Did you hear what uh, John Kerry just said? That we have to distinguish between um, the Iran of long ago and the Iran of today. What's changed? Iran has gotten worse. Iran has gotten more radical. Iran now controls four Arab capitals. Iran now is supporting Houthi re uh, rebels uh, in Yemen that have brought down the government there. Iran is worse than it was 10 years ago, at least as bad as it was 36 years ago when the Islamic Revolution was declared, not just against the Shah, but it was meant to be a global revolution for export. And I'm afraid we know, we can trust in this, that what we are hearing from John Kerry is that a bad deal is better than no deal, so we're going to take a bad deal. And it's a bad deal for many reasons. Some of them would include this. There's a, something called a sunset clause, which says in 10 years, Iran will be welcomed into the nuclear club, even if it remains what it is today, the leading sponsor of terrorism in the world. Also, what you have there is a one-year breakout time. You've had a former CIA director and a former deputy director of the International Atomic Energy Agency right. saying one year is not enough time to right. find out if they're violating the agreement and to do anything about it. And thirdly, the verification regime is no good because Iran will not allow go anywhere Please. anytime they, 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 verification. They've never allowed people in there to look. It, that, that is, that's now. a non-starter. They won't now. Hey, um, David, why should we try? Why would our officials trust Iran? Look, President Obama wants to strike a historic agreement good with for Iran. Him. So what? I want to make sure America is safe or in the world safe and Israel safe. That doesn't seem to be those don't seem to coexist. Well, let's back up a moment. Sanctions are never meant to be permanent. Sanctions are a tool for making a recalcitrant country like Iran change its behavior. In this case, the president has brought Iran to the table because sanctions have worked. And the president should be lauded for trying to negotiate a deal with Iran. Well, hold, on, hold on, hold on, David. He, he should be lauded to try and negotiate a deal with uh, a country whose supreme leader in the middle of negotiations chants death to America? The question is, what will the terms of the deal be? If the terms of the deal are strong and Iran gives up its nuclear ambitions, in return get sanctions eased and we start to normalize relations, that would be a positive. We have a moderate leader the f for the first time in a long time in Iran, so we have a chance. But we have to be vigilant moderate, about making sure moderate. the terms wow. Wow. are da strong. David, I moderate, that's a huge cliff. Um, a lot of yeah. ifs that, that David just uh, uh, threw out there. Do you believe in any of those ifs? Well, look, I, I would give the president credit for using sanctions along with Congress to bring Iran to the table. The terrible mistake that was made was then the sanction pressure was relieved and the president has refused even to threaten greater sanctions, crippling sanctions, should Iran refuse to make compromises. And there have not been compromises. In fact, sadly, uh, this administration has caved on pretty much every single issue going right down the line. So where we're heading now is to an Iran that is not moderate. Ruha you may think Rouhani is moderate. He's the president. But I would call him only pragmatic. And he works for the supreme leader. And, and the supreme and leader is that, called that for a reason. Not only that, Cliff, uh, Rouhani was the former nuclear negotiator for Iran. David, what makes you think, well, let me, let's do this. Don't you think the American people should have a say in, the, in, in what we decide to give up and give to, to Iran? Yes, through Congress they should, and this should be put before Congress, okay. and Congress should take a vote. This is the most significant arms control treaty we have had in, in years and probably will have in this entire century, but it's not being called a treaty, and the president at the moment appears to want to go around Congress, maybe go to the U.N., which would be a surrender of American sacrifice of historical proportions. This will be an historical agreement, but I think it'll be a hinge moment that will make nuclear proliferation in this century much more likely, make the Middle East much more chaotic, and 
and will be a t tremendous defeat for, for, for the United States and for the West in All general. Right, uh, David, what about you? Do, you? do you think the American people should have a say in these negotiations? Of course they should have a say, and Congress should have a say, and Congress can pass new sanctions on Iran if they want to, but we should wait and see what the terms of the proposed deal are going to be. The State Department said this week, wisely, it's not going to rush a deal just because there's a March 31st deadline. What the State Department is saying is, we want a strong deal or we're not going to go forward. That's the right approach. Why should there be any deadline? When you think about it, David, why, why, what's the rush for, to, 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 to get a, a, a a, a nuclear Iran. What, why don't we just uh, apply the sanctions and when it's time and when they want to really come to the bargaining table, let our inspectors in, then they come. They don't seem to want to do any of those. Well, they're at the table right now and discussions are ongoing. Let's see what we come up with. But I agree with you. We should push back the deadline rather than sign a bad deal. Absolutely. But part of having a deadline is to put, keep the pressure on Iran, which is the right thing to do also. Okay, you have about 20 seconds or so, uh, Cliff. Go Iran, ahead. Iran is no longer feeling any, any pressure. Congress would like to put pressure on. The president has vowed to veto that. We've seen cave after cave. The most recent one is Fordo. This was supposed to be dismantled. Then it was supposed to be a research facility only. Now it's going to be allowed. So we here for enrichment. We right. are leaving Iran a glide path. to do, The idea that the yeah. most important sponsor of terrorism in the world would get nuclear weapons and we'd okay yeah. it, this yeah. is not You a know smart who's sweating idea. the most right now? Israel. We have to leave it right there, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Up next,